I'm Всеволод Доронин, Compliance Engineer at Infinite Wireless, responsible for product certifications, radio and EMC measurements. Today I shall explain to you how we design our systems to provide you with a reliable connectivity over the radio spectrum. Modulator or demodulator, or shortly modem, is the key part of the system that assures stable connectivity in challenging spectrum conditions. To better fit into fixed wireless applications, we decided to design our own modem using the Software Defined Radio Technology, or SDR. Basically, modem takes Ethernet packets, turns them into bitstream, encodes, modulates, and upconverts the signal. But our in-house designed modem does more than that. As I shall now explain to you, our modem supports a number of algorithms crucial to make your connection truly reliable. Radio spectrum, especially its unlicensed bands, is a shared resource. Thus, interference mitigation and avoidance techniques are vital to deliver your data from A to B without losing it. Our proprietary technology, called Instant Dynamic Frequency Selection, or Instant DFS, helps to avoid interference. Upon the boot-up, Instant DFS briefly scans through all available frequencies in order to select the least congested one for the operation. But it doesn't stop at that. Instant DFS continuously monitors all other channels during specially allocated time slots. So if the current channel gets congested, or another channel becomes less interfered, the link can instantly and seamlessly move to better channel. In Quanta 5, even specific link directions, uplink and downlink, can separately be moved to more advantageous frequencies, thus refining signal-to-noise ratio even more. Instant DFS is also capable of detecting radio signals and avoiding them. In some cases, mere avoidance isn't just enough, and we also need to mitigate interference. One of very efficient techniques is Automatic Modulation Control, or AMC. AMC manages modulation and coding scheme of radio based on the error rate, and if this rate is unacceptable due to noise, or on the contrary becomes just too low and gives a great margin, AMC adjusts modulation in order to find precise balance between throw output and noise immunity. AMC mechanism today is routinely adopted by fixed wireless vendors, but not every vendor can demonstrate the ability of per stream modulation control. Quanta 5 does exactly that finding optimal signal-to-noise ratio for each spatial stream. Errors still might occur, even though Instant DFS and AMC are doing their thing. And here we have Automatic Retry Request, or ARQ. This is an algorithm that makes transmitter repeat certain radio packets if receiver did not get them. All these retransmissions occur directly within the link, partially relieving higher-level protocols from necessity to request retries from across the entire network and thus saving us from additional jitter. And not only this, as frequency increases, radio waves become sensitive even to physically small obstacles, like, say, birds, which as well may cause loss of frames, and the RQ handles cases like this perfectly. All those algorithms are sure doing their part, but overall spectral efficiency wouldn't have been so prominent if it were not for the bespoke physical and medium access layers. The possibility of designing such is another luxury of a proprietary modem. Infinite's in-house medium access layer transforms Ethernet packets into the radio frames with minimal overheads, thus allowing maximal airtime utilization, whereas physical layer grants us the capability of achieving hundreds of megabit per second in throw output, thanks to operation at higher order modulation schemes up to QAM 256 7 over 8. For each 8 encoded bits, there are 7 data bits. This simply means higher real throw output. Some of our base stations have beamforming antennas instead of fixed sectorial ones. What's curious about that beamforming antenna is that it is comprised of an array of radiators, all fed by the same signal, and by managing individual signal delays into each one of these, we can steer the main beam of directivity pattern wherever we want. This type of antenna solves two tasks simultaneously. Firstly, it avoids interferences. Comparing to a sector antenna, beamforming antenna can aim the main lobe of its directivity pattern exactly at the subscriber. And, since the main lobe by default is more narrow than the activity pattern of a sector antenna, it cancels out noises from everywhere else. Secondly, beamforming antennas have higher gain, which makes possible to cover more range or yield more power at signal-to-noise ratio at shorter distances compared to sector antennas. And this higher gain is arranged in both directions too, because subscribers are fitted with directional antennas as well, which is not the case with, say, 802.11 AC Wave 2 devices. Another remarkable feature is capability of working in non-line-of-sight conditions. 
the necessity to arrange such radio link might arise when visibility from site to site is obstructed by major obstacles like buildings or trees. But still, a link might be built on reflections from some third point, like for example a wall of another building. Such non-line-of-sight operation is possible mainly thanks to two factors. Firstly, high link budget, a natural result of increased transmit power levels at higher modulations, improved sensitivity and high gain antennas. Secondly, sensitivity doesn't degrade from multi-path propagation, that's due to in simple guard intervals that prevent inter-symbol interference. We've briefly covered some of the most important technologies and algorithms employed in products of infinite wireless. I hope you can now rest assured, our equipment will support you and your business in most adverse conditions.